This story is a sad one. It involves a friendly, overly curious dolphin whose interactions with humans led to animal cruelty and even the dolphin's death. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the tragic dolphin attack on Joao Paula Moreira. Welcome to Final Affliction. On the southeast coast of Brazil lies São Sebastião, a city famed for its golden sandy beaches. Locals and tourists flock to the warm, glistening seas. One day, while swimmers were splashing in the sea, a bottlenose dolphin made its way to the shallows. Its dorsal fin was spotted some way away, making a beeline for some female swimmers. It popped its head up next to a group of girls. They jumped in fright as the dolphin had taken them by surprise. But upon realizing that it was a friendly animal, they squealed in delight. Each of them took turns to hold their hands out and stroke the dolphin on its rounded head as it circled the group. Its smooth, wet skin shimmered in the sunshine. Its mouth was circled up into the dolphin's characteristic grin. He was a lone male and appeared friendly enough. Perhaps he was seeking comfort in the hundreds of humans that bathed in the sea each day. Perhaps he was lost and disoriented by the loud noises, children's shouts and screams, the roaring motorboat engines, or perhaps he was merely curious. Whatever the reason, this gentle mammal was soon to be known as the Killer Dolphin. Soon his playful manner would be taken advantage of, and his gentle nature would make a sudden and unexpected switch. The girls continued playing near the dolphin for the rest of the afternoon. But when the day turned to night, they left. The crowds subsided and the seas became quiet. The dolphin was left alone. The following morning, as bathers returned to the warm waters once more, the dolphin reappeared. He would splash about in the water, blowing moist air through his blowhole, diving beneath the surface and leaping up and out of the waves. As word spread that there was a friendly dolphin near the beach, more and more people wanted to witness it. They wanted to experience the closeness of nature and the chance to get up close and personal to one of nature's most intelligent animals. Swarms of people splashed into the sea. They scrambled for a rare photo opportunity or the chance to stroke him. The locals affectionately named the dolphin Teo. Initially, the dolphin visited the ferry pier. He would inquisitively pop his head up to see the crowds boarding the ferries. Each day, he followed the boats out of the harbor, jumping behind them in their wakes or diving in front of their bows. After several months occupying the waters near the pier, the dolphin headed a few miles north, and that is where he found the beaches, packed with people enjoying the sunshine and the sea. At times, there were up to 30 people flocking around him, splashing about and prodding and poking him. People grabbed Tio's dorsal fin, willing him to give them a ride through the water. Others grabbed onto his pectoral fins, restraining the animal and causing him to panic. Each time, the dolphin struggled to get away. He was strong and powerful, but with so many people grabbing him, he became wary and anxious. It was only a matter of time before Tio would react. But still, the dolphin came back for more. He was teased and tormented. He was bullied and abused. People took advantage of his gentle nature. Some people placed an ice cream over Tio's blowhole, screaming in delight when he exhaled, sending the ice cream soaring into the air. Others attempted to pour beer into the dolphin's mouth. What had begun as a rare opportunity to see such a graceful marine mammal had turned into a circus ground. Eventually and understandably, Tio snapped. In November 1994, he began to resist the torment. He fought back. Bottlenose dolphins can grow up to 13 feet or 4 meters long. They can weigh over 650 pounds or 300 kilograms. They have between 80 and 100 sharp teeth, which are used for grabbing their prey. They can swim at speeds of up to 20 miles per hour, and they are most famous for their intelligence. There is a huge amount of research demonstrating the intelligence of dolphins from tool use, behavioral mimicry and language comprehension, to inter- and intra-species cooperative hunting, 
they are in tune with their surroundings and understand a great deal. There are regular reports of dolphins biting people both in captivity and in the wild. They can drag people underwater and crash into them, causing serious, if not fatal, damage. People have had their backs and ribs broken from dolphins plowing aggressively into them with their snouts. In November 1994, as tourists and locals alike were enjoying their time with Teo, they began to take advantage of him again. This time, he lashed out, splashing his tail aggressively and knocking into the swimmers at tremendous speeds. People began screaming, splashing around in the water as they desperately tried to get away from him and make it to shore. People on the beaches rushed into the water to help drag the injured people to safety. The attack only lasted a couple of minutes, but 28 people were injured in the water that day. Most of the swimmers were taken to hospital and treated for deep bruising and cracked ribs. This earned the dolphin the nickname of Killer Dolphin, a name that Teo was about to live up to. You would have thought that people would have learnt their lessons after Teo's outburst. To some, it was obvious that he was being pestered far too much, pushing him and pushing him to act out aggressively. The dolphin had tolerated so much, and now he had enough. People also suspected that he was acting territorially, as he preferred to swim closely with women, often chasing away men. One December afternoon, two friends, Joao Paulo Moreira and Wilson Reyes Pedroso, entered the water. They had been drinking alcohol and swam out to join some women just off the shore. Teo had been playful with the two women who were delighted with his company. However, Joao and Wilson were rough and disrespectful to Teo. They messed about, likely trying to impress the women with their antics. Joao tried to put his cigarette into Teo's blowhole. Teo thrashed around. He rammed the two men, repeatedly crashing into them with his snout. The men shouted out. Each time the dolphins smashed into them and they were thrown through the water. The two women swam for the shore, leaving the men fighting for their lives. Onlookers swam out to the distressed men. Wilson gasped for air, clutching his ribs in the chest-high water. He was in pain. The sheer force of the dolphin's blows had cracked his ribs. He was lucky not to drown. He was lucky to be alive. His teasing and tormenting of a wild animal had served him right. Joa was less lucky. As he lay, floating on the surface of the ocean, unable to move, onlookers swam out to rescue him. The repeated blows from the dolphin had knocked him so hard that not only had his ribcage been crushed, expelling all air from his lungs, but he was bleeding internally. He was dragged ashore by the people who rescued him and taken straight to the hospital. He died a short while later of his injuries. The coroner stated he had received a massive internal hemorrhage. At the time, this was the only reported human fatality caused by a wild dolphin. The local authority feared that there might be a backlash against all dolphins following Joao's death. A few months later, in the summer of 1995, Teo disappeared. Some believe that he left the shorelines and joined a passing pod of dolphins, returning to the wild habitat in which he belonged. Some, however, believe Teo had a different fate. Some believe that locals may have killed him in an act of revenge for the death of their friends. No one really knows what happened to him. Although encounters with nature are a truly wonderful thing, we must respect the animals on this planet and the habitats in which they live. It was humans that pushed this gentle giant to become a killer dolphin, causing Joao to meet his untimely, final affliction.